On the way back from Isla over to Edinburgh, we stopped off at the Glengoyne Distillery. We're now entering Glengoyne time. Very nice distillery. So the first thing we did after we went to the re registration, we went to the shop. So it's a nice little building there. Everything is just a long little line all the way back to the waterfall that I'll show later on. Here we have the shop. You have some of those staves there. There was a hand fill, which was, of course, empty. So sorry. There was a teapot dram, batch number eight, for 120 euro pounds. Sorry. I did not buy it. Shame on me. My suitcase was absolutely maxed out from the from the weight, and so I didn't want to buy a second suitcase. So um, that the distillery manager number three had just been released as well. And so you see some of the different things there that you can buy at the shop. I prefer the old boxes rather than the new ones, but that's just me and my personal opinion there. So um, I like the old colors as well, a little bit more of that signal color. <laughs> that little sink really, really fascinated me, but of course it's very helpful to have a little bit of water to, to use there. So Glengoyne, they do have some expensive prices for some of the older bottles. Am I willing to pay those expensive prices? Me, personally, no. I do not actually equate expensive with better or older with better. So some things that are a little bit cheaper are what I'd rather buy myself from Glengoyne. So no smoke whatsoever with Glengoyne. Very, very good. Ian McLeod um, owns it now since, what was it, 2003, 2005. And um, Glengoyne has been in continuous operation since 1833. So... We have some of these bottles here. What is very fascinating is the fact that um, Glengoyne is made in the Highlands. You go over the street to where the parking lot is, and there you actually have the Lowlands. So they store their whiskey in Lowlands. Look at this, the Glengoyne 50-year-old. Isn't that amazing? No, thank you. I like the bottle design. I like the label. Um, well done there. So once again, that picture here. So moving on now to um, the packaging, you can take off the lid of the new ones and it opens up a little bit. I'm not the, I'm, I don't know. All right, so that's that. So after we did the shopping tour, we actually looked at the distillery a little bit. Here you have the beautiful view, view there. Um, Duty Free Warehouse number one. They have a total of, I think, eight different warehouses around the area there. So I really like that pipe as well, that curved pipe that goes down there. I'm not really sure what it's for, but that's good. And a tiny little video, you can see the car go by there. That's where the warehouse is on the other side. The silo there, a little bit of the little warehouses. That stone building in the back is where we did our tasting. Um, very, very nice. Here we had the waiting room. John, you actually saw, was our tour guide. He did a great job. He was a cooper in his first life. He worked for Diageo for many, many years. I took a picture of the um, that hammer mill, and then I was suddenly told, you're only allowed to take pictures in the still house, which was for me, not that. And he said, no, nowhere on the tour. So you could go outside the door of the still house and take a picture there. And now you actually see next those six happy guys that were part of the tour together to Isla as well as now um, also in Scotland. So the warehouse, I love this picture. Um, you have the different barrels, you have the different American oak, and you have um, European oak, and you have the 30 years, what happens to that. Over to the left, there's a little cage, there's bars, and you can go behind the bars and take that picture there. Um, they tell us the difference between the Quackos Robor, which is the European oak, and they compare it, of course, to the Quackos Alba, which is the American oak. That's the main differences here. They can't go compete. We did a tour, um, the collection tour and tasting with chocolate, which I thought was very, very nice. So we had the 10-year-old, the 18-year-old, and the 21-year-old, each with a little praline, praline um, handmade, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, one guy actually preferred the, the 10, I prefer the 18, another guy preferred the 21, so they had a little bit for everyone. Today's rain is tomorrow's whiskey, nope, Glengoyne. Beautiful, beautiful room there. You have the mantle of the fireplace with all those bottles up there. I thought they did a great job. So um, that was the room that we did our tasting in, and our tour guide was fabulous. 
So Glengoyne is in Dumgoyne. That's the location here. What would be a tour of Glengoyne without the waterfalls? So you have to take a look at the waterfalls here. Um, the water is not used for the production of whiskey. It is used a little bit to cool down some of the pr production equipment. The quantity of the water is just not enough to actually use that. They, they um, pipe in the water from a couple kilometers away. No problem. We were there in May of 2022. Beautiful, beautiful flowers. Very, very nice thing. So, now 1833 has been distilling ever since there. My question of the day is, what is your favorite Glengoyne? I prefer the 18-year-old. Maybe you prefer a different one. The teapot dram would be my favorite, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough to convince me to buy a new suitcase and bring it home with me. What's your favorite? Bye-bye.